Hello, everybody in the audience. We are back on track. Shevin, hang on, take it, take it from me. Yeah, let us now welcome Gergana Young, who is also Microsoft MVP, and uh, Gergana will talk about JavaScript apps in the cloud. So, how are you doing, Gergana? I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Good, good. The pleasure, floor is yours. Pleasure. All right, great. Well, thank you so much for the intro, and um, I'm going to get straight into it. So uh, thank you. I was really excited about going to Mauritius for these talks, but uh, I guess maybe next year. <laughs> um, Probably. So let's get started. <laughs> um, OK, so I am going to be talking to you today about, but first let me introduce myself. I work for Cora, and I am a co-organizer of JOSIE.js, which is the Johannesburg JavaScript Meetup. We meet currently online on the second last Thursday of the month. So if you're interested in listening to some JavaScript talks, you're welcome to join us. And I'm also a Microsoft MVP. I'm a Windows development Microsoft MVP due to my uh, contributions to the IoT community and the South African devel development community in general. But the whole thing started with a little Star Wars robot, <clears throat> which I got, and it comes with an app it, to do things that it normally wouldn't. And since then, there has been quite a few other gadgets and things that I have hacked together. If you're interested in some of those, uh, you can come and watch my lightsaber talk a little bit later today. But unfortunately, today, this talk that we're watching right now does not involve any things. It will still be exciting because we are still talking about JavaScript. So as JavaScript developers, we start off with building things for our jobs, and then we move into wanting to build our own things. Well, not just JavaScript developers. I think all developers do this at some point in time. And with most web applications, it's really nice because you can build something and share it with anyone in the world just by hosting it on the web. But with the static sites, it's a lot easier. There's a lot of tutorials online that you can get your app to the cloud. But if your app starts having some more complexity, some business logic, some sort of server that needs to run, gets a little bit more difficult to get it onto the cloud. But that's why I'm here today, to show you an easier way to do this. And there's always that one dreaded word that we hear when it comes to getting things onto the cloud, DevOps. Biggest buzzword of our time. And it means different things to different people. This is the definition from Wikipedia. DevOps is a set of practices that combine software development and information technology operations, which aims to shorten the system development lifecycle. Now, if you feel a little bit like this right now, I would forgive you, because what does that even mean? And it's okay to feel like this, because at the end of the day, DevOps means what you need it to mean for your team or your application or whatever it is you are doing. And for something simple that you're wanting to make at home for your own personal website, that doesn't have to be complicated long words from Wikipedia definitions. It can be a lot easier. For this, Today, we're going to talk about using Azure DevOps in order to achieve this. Now, Azure DevOps is a set of developer services formerly known as TFS. I know a lot of people have heard and know of TFS, but it's a new and much improved experience. There have a range of services that you could use. Azure Boards, which is um, used to plan and track and prioritize working projects, 
um, Azure repos, which is a repository, a Git, Git repository where you can store your code. Azure pipelines is what we're actually going to be using today to get to build pipelines to get your application building and deploying. Azure test plans provides us with manual and automated um, testing tools for our code and Azure art artifacts for hosting packages and uh, creating and sharing them. This is the whole suite of products. And today was a small subset of that suite, namely Azure pipelines. The other things we're going to be using are the Azure Cloud and GitHub. I decided that uh, GitHub would be a good place to store this code because I found that a lot of developers have their pet projects in GitHub, so it would be easier to get started from there rather than putting it in Azure Pipelines, in the Azure repos, sorry. Cool, so let's get on to the first demo. Now, I've recorded a few of my demos because I didn't want to rely too much on my internet and deploying to the cloud, but I do have one actual live coding demo, which I'll do at the end. So we can we can get to that one in a few minutes. So I'm just going to walk you through the video of, our, of this first demo. And the first thing we're going to do is create the actual web app in Azure. So you go to portal.azure.com and you get a resource. We search for web app, and it's the first one that appears there, and we click on create. The first thing we need to do is add a resource group. We can either create a new one, but I have one existing already. And we're going to name it. It has to be named something unique because that will be the name of your actual website. So we're going to be building josiejs.azurewebsites.net. We choose code and we choose the environment, Node 12, the latest available version of Node. Linux, we're running on Linux. And because I'm in South Africa, I'm going to choose South Africa North as my region. So it runs closest to me. Then the last thing we need to do is create an app service. We can create a new app service called Josie JS Demo. And we can change because this is a small and simple app. I'm going to choose the smallest available size so it doesn't use up too many of the Azure credits. Once we click create, uh, we can double check all of our information and it will start creating the deployment in the background. That takes a couple of minutes to complete. So we can leave it running there and move on to talking about the next steps. So now that we've created our web app, we need to start getting our code onto the cloud. And for that, we need to build the code. Now, for building and deploying options to the cloud, there are many, many options. There's many clouds. There is many tools that you can use. And there's also different processes that different teams use. So one of the processes I've found works really well, and I've used it on a couple of teams already, is that you need to put the onus on the developer to make sure that the code that they create is good enough to go straight to production. That in that way, every time you push to the master branch, you as the developer of the application know that that code is going straight to production. So you need to make sure that your code is written and hopefully without bugs, but bugs happen. So what ways do we do this in order to make sure that we don't break production? Well, having tests, unit tests, integration tests, all, all kinds of tests on every level, you need to have those in your code in order to be sure that the code you're creating isn't creating more bugs. Using pull requests, 
The pull request model works really well because you always have a second set of eyes that double check the code that you're writing because it's easy when you're the one writing the code to make a small mistake and second set of eyes picks it up quite easily. And then having a rollback strategy. Because mistakes happen, there's always the chance that it, you will miss something. So having a way to go back to a previously working version of the code is always a good option. So how do we do this using Azure Pipelines? So our deployment there is complete. So we're going to go to dev.azure.com and create a new project. Our new project is going to be called Josie JS Demo. And it's going to be public because anyone can access it in that way. Let's create it. This takes a few seconds, not too long. Once the project is created, we'll be able to see that it has all of those things we talked about earlier, the boards, the, re uh, the repos, the pipelines, the test plans, the artifacts. The repos is where you could store your code if you wanted to. In this case, I'm storing it in GitHub. GitHub so we want to go into that today. So that's why we can go straight to pipelines and create our first bold pipeline. So we click on pipeline and click on create. In here, we will choose GitHub. The first time you select GitHub here, it will ask you for permissions to your GitHub repository and which repository you want to give permissions to specifically. So I've already given permissions, which is why it's listing all of my repositories. I'm going to select the Josie JS demo. And in configuring pipelines, you can choose a already pre-built pipeline. So if you're, for example, building a Vue application, you can choose the one for Vue. If you're building one with React or just an Express app, you can use any of those. Now, ours is just an Express app. But I want to show you how to do it from scratch. So we're going to do a starter pipeline. You can see there that it's linked to my GitHub repo. And there is a file called Azure Pipelines.yaml, which we're going to use, uh, use for our pipeline. The trigger is on the master branch. So every time we commit to the master branch, this pipeline will run. Then we have the pool. The pool is where you choose what platform to run in. So in this case, we're running in Ubuntu latest, but this would be the pool that you select for whatever platform you want. And then we have steps. Let's delete the existing steps and create our own steps. There are two types of steps that we want to use. The first one is a task. This is a built-in task. And we're going to first install Node on our platform. The at at the end tells us which version of this built-in task we're using. So usually using the latest version is the best option. A task takes in a number of inputs. For the node, node task, we have to specify a version spec. So we'll be saying that we want to use version 12 of Node. And then the last thing we need to do here is add a display name for this step. This is the thing that will show in the pipeline so that you know what actually failed if something fails. So adding a good display name is usually a good idea. Our next step is going to be a script. Now, a script is any script that you can run in the command line. So pretty much any script that you can think of you can run here. We're going to run npm install so that we can install all of our node packages that we need for this app. And our display name would be installing the application packages, dependencies. Then we will add another script. We spoke about testing. So our next script is going to run all of our tests just by running npm test. And I'll show you what it's actually running in a moment. 
let's give it a display name and say run the unit tests. Once our tests are passing, we know that we are ready to start deploying this application to the cloud. So we will start doing this by using another built-in task. This next built-in task is going to copy fi the files of, of our package into a prep folder so we can start using them. The inputs for this task are firstly the source folder, so where this comes from. This is a folder that we reference the default working directory. Next, we have the contents. The contents is what we want to copy. In this case, we're going to be copying absolutely everything. So we'll just use star star, but you can exclude folders there or um, say, don't put this in or only put this in. And lastly, the target folder. This is also a built-in folder, and we're going to name our subfolder app. Once that's done, we give this a display name as well. Copy the files to both directory. Once our files have been copied across, there's one last thing we need to do. And that for that, we'll use another built-in task. The last built-in task we are going to use is to publish the, these files to, so that they are ready for deployment. And we're going to use the publish build artifacts task and its inputs are firstly, the place where we want to get the, uh, what we that we want to publish, so the path to publish, which is that build directory we created earlier, and the name of the artifact. We're just going to pull that app. And we give this a display name, publish. Once that's done, we can now save our pipelines file. When we click the save button, it's actually going to ask us to commit this into the GitHub repo and then start running it. So you'll see in a moment when we actually go and pull the GitHub repo, we have that Azure pipelines in our repo. So let's go there and just do a git pull. And you can see there's a new file called Azure Pipelines. So if we click on it, it's right there. You can make changes in this file and push it back up to Git in order to rerun the pipeline again. So our pipeline should now be running. Let's go and check on it. You can see that the first job it ran is it checked out the repository from GitHub. We didn't add that as a step, but it's there because we linked it to the GitHub repo. And, oh no, our unit tests are failing. Let's go and have a look why our unit tests are failing. So if we run our tests locally as well, let's see if it is a local failure as well. Yes, there it is. Now, let's go to our tests and check. Well, it's expecting false to be truthy. That's why it's failing. So we can fix that. Now, I know this isn't a very real test. I just added it in so I could show you how we do this. In order to run the test, we have a script called test. And I'm using Jest in this case, but you could use whichever testing framework you prefer for Node. Now, we add this to our repository. We commit it. And adding a good commit message at this point is very good because that is the message that will get displayed on your pipeline. 
And once we push, and it's done, we can go back to our pipelines and we can see that a new run has started up. And you can see that same message, that fixed tests message over there. So if we click on that pipeline, it should be running. There it is, and the job, it's already checked out, it's installing Node. It should, in this case, run the unit test successfully and complete the entire process. Now, this part takes a little bit of time, so I'm going to leave it to run in the background while we talk about some other things. All right, so these build pipelines that we just created are quite simple, but you can do a lot more with the Azure Pipelines build pipeline. To, and uh, you can achieve that by a few different methods. Now, one of the other cool things you can do is using a strategy. A strategy allows you to select a number of different platforms to build on, and then using a variable, you can say which platform you want to build on. That way, if you need your code to be able to build on Linux, Mac, and Windows, you can create a number of different strategies to build your code. One of the other cool features is something called stages. So in, your, in our pipeline, we just had one set of steps that we were following, but you could have a set of different stages. So in this case here, we have a build stage and a deploy stage, and the deploy stage is dependent on the build stage succeeding. So only after all of the steps in the build stage have run successfully will the deploy stage start. One of the other strategies we're using in this example is the run once strategy. So deployment should only ever run once. That way we won't ever mess something up in our deployments. We saw some of the built-in tasks like other tasks, built-in tasks that you can use in, uh, in the pipeline. There are build tasks. So build tasks are for different languages and platforms. So uh, you, can, you can use pretty much any language you can think of and build it using Azure pipelines. The testing tasks are tasks for running uh, automated tests against your code. And then there's packaging and deploy tasks, which you can use to deploy things to the cloud and create packages or share packages, etc. There, You can also create your own tasks if you can't find one of the many that exist, uh, if you want to do something specific. I honestly haven't tried that yet, so I don't know how easy it is to do, but it's an option. All right, now, now it's time for our, the last part of our demo, and this one is a bit more involved. I've shown you already in use, with using stages how you could use the build pipeline to deploy. So in this part of the demo, I'm going to show you a different way you can release your app to the cloud by using the release pipelines. So if we go back to our pipeline, we can see that it's now completed successfully. Everything has run, so our build is fine. So let's go to releases and create a new release pipeline. For this one, we're going to use a, a template for deploying to an Azure app service. We need to call our stage. So in this case, we're only going to have one stage. Stages can be dependent on, on each other or run in par parallel, but our one stage is going to be called deploy JS. And it has one task that it has to run. First thing you have to do is select your Azure subscription. When the first time you do this, you have to log in to Azure to give it permissions. Uh, we're going to be deploying to a web app on Linux, and 
In the list, we can see the web app that we created earlier, Josie.js. Our startup command, we're going to leave blank, and I'll explain to you in a moment why we're leaving that blank. And now our actual job. It's display name, you can change that if you'd like. I'm just going to leave it as is. Everything else we can leave. The only thing is we need to choose what we're actually deploying. But we haven't provided this pipeline with an artifact, so there's nothing there. So we have to go back and give the pipeline something to deploy. So if we go back to pipeline, we can say add an artifact. In the add an artifact, we're going to choose a bold artifact, and that is that the result of the bold pipeline. That's what we're pretty much saying there. And another thing we can do is make it automatic. So every time there is a new version of the build pipeline that's being created, we enable, uh, we enable a deployment trigger. You can add filters there as well. So it can be filters like only certain branches need to be deployed, but the default one is that only when there is a master, master branch. Now we can actually change this. So now we have an artifact here, and we're just going to select that whole folder. Because if you remember earlier when we were creating the web app, we said we will be deploying code. So we can just deploy the whole folder. And the last thing is we need to select our runtime stack. In this case, it will be node 12. Once we save this, we can put it inside a folder as well with a comment. we can now create our first release. If we hit create, it says release one has been created. And if we go to it, we can see it starting to run. Now, again, this takes a little bit of time to run. So I'm going to leave it running and show you some more, some of the actual code for this application. So here we are on our master branch. Here is our Azure Pipelines file, as we saw it earlier. Our package.json has three commands in it. It's a bit smaller. The test command, which we already spoke about using JEST. The debug command, which is something I've gotten used to using locally for running my code locally. Um, and then the start command. If you remember when we were creating the release pipeline, we left the start command blank because what it does is it looks for the default start command inside your package.json. So this is the command it's actually going to run. We're setting the environment port to 8080. The reason I do that here is because if you use port 8080, you don't have to make any changes in Azure. If you don't use port 8080, let's zoom in here a little bit. This is Josie, uh, the Josie.js app service, as we saw it um, created earlier. If you go to the configuration, if you're not using port 8080, you have to give access to the port you actually want to use. So in the app settings, you would have to add a new app setting called port and set the value to 3000 or whatever port you're using. But 8080 is enabled by default, so that's why it's I just use it to make things a little bit easier. Then let's look at what the actual code looks like. So as I said, it's very simple. There is one endpoint, uh, just one get endpoint, and I'll, I'm using Express to get that endpoint. The web part of it has some CSS to make it look pretty, has a JavaScript file which calls that with uh, that endpoint from Express to get those uh, wizards, and then our index.html, which just displays some info. Let's take a quick look at what this looks like locally. It started up on three, localhost 3000. So if we just go there, 
here is what our website looks like. This is our meetups official website for the time being because we don't have any other ones. Uh, all right, so what I want to now show you uh, is the deployed website. So after that pipeline ran, if we go to the overview of our app service, once it loads, come on. Oh, Azure is being slow, let's just go directly to it. We go to josiejs.azurewebsites.net. There it is, the deployed version of our website. So let's make a small change. If we take a look at the actual pipeline, the build pipeline we're running, this is the last time I ran it. And you can see it took eight minutes and 40 seconds. Now that's a really long time to wait for a build. And one of the things that takes really long, if we take a look, is the publishing of the artifacts. And that is because it's copying a lot of files. Now, as node developers know, usually when you run npm install, you install pretty much the entire world, the entire internet. So what we can do to improve this is we can't just run npm install prod because then npm test would not work, right? Because our testing framework is a dev dependency. What we can do, however, is take out all of the dev dependencies once we finish testing. So we can add a script here that runs npm prune dash dash prod. And let's give it a display name. Delete dev depend Sees. Cool. Let's make one other small change so we can see the website actually changing. Let's go to the index file and at the top here add a follow us on Twitter at Josie. Save that. Stop the app running. Let's do a git add. Git commit. Added Twitter link and npm prune. And we do a git push. Now, once this has pushed into our repo, we can go and check our pipeline again. Hopefully this will reduce the time that our pipeline needs to run. There is our latest commit right there. And if we go to the job, it's busy starting up. Right, it's checking out everything. Let's see if it runs a little bit faster than usual. So install still takes a bit of time because npm install is generally a bit slower. Running the unit tests, deleting the dev dependencies. That's our new step that we added. And now the publish, let's see. Well, it's already getting there a lot faster than usual. 63%. I think if we wait for it another minute, it will be done. There it is. And now this succeeded. So if we go to releases, we will see a new release being triggered. Let's refresh here. And there is release eight being triggered.
Now, the release itself, I haven't figured out a good way of speeding it that up yet. So I'm going to leave it running and close all of these things. Check with our hosts if there are any questions while that runs in the background. Yeah, so, so you mentioned about keeping like master always like shippable that that you would be always be able to deploy that. Like what are the controls that, that you put in place to to make sure that master is always shippable? So one of the, one of the things is that I found with with my uh, two of my teams that I've worked on is that it's um, it's really good to uh, and I guess it works better for smaller teams, but it's really good to for every developer to know that if you push to master that that is ship that's going to get shipped. Um, so so for, firstly, uh, you know putting that on the developer. So, and then also having some sort of uh, control in there to, to make sure that no one can just push to master. There has to be a pull request first that gets reviewed by someone uh, and so on. So, um, and another thing is, uh, again, I think this is, uh, it dep depends a lot on the people, but it's better to, uh, to break things faster you know, so get uh, if you break something, fix it as quickly as possible, rather than than trying to uh, not to make sure nothing is ever broken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like fail fast and recover faster, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. And uh, can you? like tell us a bit in like the Azure context, like how, how would you configure like uh, the pull request system to, to make sure that all, all the builds is passing and the test are passing? How would you configure those things in, in Azure DevOps? Um, so with, um, with the build pipeline, you can control that. So all of those steps that I, uh, I was showing, they are all dependent on each other always. So if the previous step fails, then the next step won't run, uh, which is which is why you have to you know put them in a certain order. And then there's also the stages uh, which you can use for that. So you can say one stage depends on the previous stage completing successfully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Azure DevOps very easy and very intuitive to use. Yeah, no more questions from from the chat. Should we look at the deployment? <laughs> Sounds good. Has it let's completed? Have let's have a look. It has. It has completed successfully. <laughs> so if we go to the actual website and refresh, there is that. There is that. Follow us on Twitter that we added in to the HTML. So I just want to show you, so with the pipelines, the deployment pipeline, there it is. So it takes a little bit longer than the release, uh, than, uh, than the build pipeline to run. All right, well, I have. Yeah, all good. Thank you very much. Nice, nice demo. Maybe we can wrap up by talking a bit about your MVP life. Tell us a bit like how are you contributing to the community? How did you become an MVP? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, I uh, I became an MVP in October last year. Uh, I was uh, we were talking about it earlier just before we went live uh, about how I was a bit disappointed that that the MVP summit was was virtual because because it was going to be my first one. And the virtual one was actually really nice, but I think going to to Seattle would have been quite quite interesting as well. Um, so I'm yes. hoping that that I remain an MVP long enough to actually attend <laughs> the real one since the next one is also virtual. Um, but yeah, um, 
so I started out, uh, as I mentioned earlier, with programming that little Star Wars robot. That's how the whole thing started. And then uh, since then, I've been uh, talking a lot about different IoT and JavaScript related things. Usually one of my main interests is getting differences to run JavaScript. Um, I know this uh, that seems kind of weird because I, IoT and things in general, electronics and JavaScript are both things that are known to be quite unreliable, <laughs> but I like putting those two <laughs> unreliable things into one and making them work together. So, so yeah, I've, I've been doing quite a few talks a lot last year, a lot more, I guess, because there was, uh, there was the opportunity to travel. And I actually, um, one of the South African MVPs invited me to speak at the South African Insider Dev Tour. And mm -hmm. that's when I, I met a lot of um, yeah. other MVPs and Microsoft people and so on and so forth. And um, and after that, I got nominated by one of the, the guys I met there. And they seem to like what I do. So, <laughs> yeah, they... And yeah, yeah the, definitely. The, net, the, net, the networking part is, is amazing um, in this community. I mean, it's really great. And um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, you mentioned about um, web development, JavaScript, and hardware. Uh, there's also another female tinkerer. Um, she is actually having some crazy stuff. Um, I think her name is Charlie. Uh, she's at the moment, I think, in Australia. And she actually is like, you know, using web, API, web APIs uh, for kind of, um, you know, um, brainwave interaction and things like that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, even then, even that you say, okay, you do web development, do you do JavaScript, um, it seems that there are at the moment no real uh, restrictions or boundaries in order to access uh, hardware because, I mean, there are the possibilities that by, you know, using the camera, uh, recording, and then with AI interpreting your movements so that it actually then, like, changes and moves your character uh, in a little game that you, that you developed in JavaScript. And, I mean, the whole concept is, is developed up in JavaScript and it's pretty amazing that you can just, you know, literally with one programming language, you can uh, cover the whole range, what is necessary from accessing the hardware, processing it in the middleware, exposing an API if needed, and then having it on, on the front end in order then to produce things. And I mean, yeah, having an infrastructure with DevOps, with the pipelines, I mean, this makes it also super easy then to have um, constant a high quality delivery and and uh, deployments on on your productive sites. I mean, even for us here in the community, um, uh, we mentioned it earlier that uh, during the keynote that um, effectively effectively all our um, uh, community activities and websites are hosted on GitHub, like all the previous conference websites and the current one. And most of them are also hooked up with Azure DevOps in order then to, to take care of the build process and the release process. So yeah. it was really, really impressive to what you, what you demonstrated. And I was like, hey, I know this part. This is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um I, I did this talk earlier this year, actually, and so, someone else asked uh, about the difference between the DevOps, Azure DevOps pipelines and GitHub Actions. And mm. at the time, I didn't know a lot about GitHub Actions, but uh, I dug into it a little bit. And, and it's, actually, it's actually very similar. You can achieve very similar things. One of the things I really like about Azure DevOps, and, and this is also a personal preference, is that the UI is so nice. So you can go onto the website and find everything you need. Whereas with GitHub Actions, it's a lot more uh, code based. So you have to do things in, in Bash and in, uh, uh, in scripting languages rather than using a UI, which is, which is a personal preference. Again, some people prefer doing things in scripts and, and Bash and so on. But I, I, like, I like using the UIs, which make my, makes my life so much easier. 
GitHub Actions is quite a new product also. I'm sure this is going to evolve. And uh, mm. even if you look at Azure DevOps with the new YAML system, it, it looks quite familiar with, with GitHub Actions. I think that's, yeah. that's like the route that Microsoft is taking to be able to bring these two products, to align these two products, to provide mm. a better experience in the long term. But uh, definitely, like uh, Azure DevOps, really, really intuitive. Yeah. Just yeah. Okay. yeah. I, I, I can confirm on that uh, because recently I was experimenting with the preview for the um, Azure static web apps, uh, SWA. And currently, during the preview period, it is only connected to um, GitHub Actions. And I was like, what? Where is my access to Azure DevOps? And I was a little bit, you know, disappointed, but okay, it's preview. And yeah, this is also where I then actually noticed that, okay, GitHub Actions, you, you do the authentications part and bits and pieces. And then the end is that actually the Azure portal generates a YAML file for you that controls the GitHub Actions. So. Crossing fingers, I had nothing to do with the GitHub Actions UI per se, but um, I was then actually manipulating the YAML file in order to to make some adjustments. And um, yeah, as Shevin said, YAML <sighs> is like it's... the next evolution of, of JSON instead of, yeah. Um, yeah. You either, either you love it or you hate it. <laughs> I guess this is the, the, the relationship. Yeah. I don't know how it is for you, Gregana. <laughs> yeah, it it can be it can be it can be confusing at first, especially you know, coming from coming from JSON, uh, because mm. JSON looks a lot more like like JavaScript code than YAML does. But I've, I've have found that this, that YAML can be a lot more expressive. Indeed, indeed. And also, I think it's also nice that it is um, more towards a cross product or pro cross um, manufacturer approach, because even on the Google Cloud platform, the 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 use of YAML files is is very common, uh, in order then to to um, orchestrate and and um, allocate resources. So I think. It's it's a good approach um, as long as the UI offers a, uh, an interesting alternative. All right, yeah, yeah thank you so much um, for this presentation on uh, putting JavaScript apps into the cloud. Um, it was very interesting to see that a lot of things can be automated. And as I said, I was having a few déjà vu moments where it's like, okay. I know this, and I can really recommend it. Um, if you if you have static websites, if you have um, single page applications, look into the features that are available on on Azure DevOps or DevOps, or alternatively, what is available on GitHub Actions, uh, and take down the go down this road, explore it. There are lots of possibility that for you as a even as a single developer, uh, as a team, uh, is going to simplify your life. Uh, it takes away a lot of the repetitive work. Uh, you get security features in regards to the approvals uh, into that if you're working in a team, which is quite nice. You get email notifications if something is breaking. So, yeah, please head out, uh, check it out. And uh, with that, Gagana, looking forward to welcome you back then at around four our time. I think this is two o'clock in South Africa. Yeah. And building a lightsaber. That yes. sounds <laughs> extraordinary. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. And bye for now. <laughs> bye. So, Shevin, what was your impression about this? Yeah, I got some familiar tools and uh, ideas. Very nice. And you? Yeah, I mean, as I said, I, I had deja vu, and I was like, that's cool to see actually to get also this kind of confirmation that what we are doing with our um, 
GitHub hosted um, repositories for the MSSC community um, that it is, you know, that we are in the same steps and, and uh, configurations like it is done with other developers and even other companies. So mm -hmm. as, you are, as you are involved with the development at MCB, um, what are you guys using? Azure DevOps, what is part of your automated pipelines? Yeah, we have the whole, uh, everything is running on uh, Azure DevOps and we use a lot of uh, the pipelines for for testing and all the steps required to, to be able to build and release the apps. We have all these running in Azure DevOps and mm -hmm. we also have a nice integration to run some of the stuffs on premise also so it's very nice integrations out there you can put some of your builds agents on premise we we'll also have some of the, some of the builds agents in the cloud especially for mobile where we have like the mac os agents very nice you don't need to yes. be able to purchase additional hardware can just build your mobile apps with these uh, agents available on demand and it makes a lot of sense from a cost perspective also yeah definitely did you did you run any other systems i think there's maven there's jenkins which are quite commonly used when you do mobile development as far as i understood um but i guess it's a similar approach that you mm -hmm. set up your build infrastructures. But did mm -hmm. you use these kind of systems before? Um, no, it's only on Azure. And I think mm -hmm. Javin also has a session happening sometime today where he's talking about especially the mobile stack with where we are using App Center to be able to ship the applications to the different users internally for testing. So at the moment, every day we have like QA builds released automatically to the, the QA engineers and other people in MCB to be able to test the app every day. And this also awesome. helps us to get a lot of feedback on what we are building daily. Cool. I guess with that, we're going to have a quick break. With that, the audience, keep, uh, keep uh, asking your questions in the, in the chat. Uh, stay tuned. Thank you. See you. See you.